Hey guys, how are you? Welcome into a Thursday morning episode of the Daily Juice Podcast with me, Matt Peralt at Sports Talk Matt to follow me across all social. This podcast being brought to you by OmahaSteaks.com. No rant coming tonight on our friends at OmahaSteaks.com. The customized URL is OmahaSteaks.com slash juice. Go there. You guys can go and sign up for a subscription. You get free burgers for life when you do so. 10% off everything you order with a 100% money back guarantee at omahasteaks.com slash juice. Okay, so not a losing night. So I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious. So we're going to try to switch things up. So different background, okay? Different camera, changing things up. Arizona State had it. A lot of you guys took plus 18 in-game. That lost, or I pushed, right? They lose by 18 or 19. Well, it was brutal. I mean, they collapsed. We had it. They were down by five most of the second half, and then the Sun Devils just fell apart. Arizona wound up winning the game, covering every number, really, every in-game number, really, for the most part, and so we lose there. We got the NBA bet right. That was the under for the Nuggets. One bet right, two bet wrong. Two in college basketball. The Butler pick was dead wrong. That was a horrible bet by me. St. John's killed them. St. John's is playing pretty well. Going into the Big East tournament, they're dangerous. Wouldn't want to be playing Rick Pitino's team right now. They figured out their confidence. They're not blowing leads anymore. So I thought, okay, up by 10 at the break. They're going to blow a lead. Didn't happen. They won the game. They extended the lead, and they killed Butler on the road. It's a big win for St. John's. Peaking at the right time under Rick Pitino. So just one quick thing about last night. Not going to go into what I said. Go watch it if you need to see what I said. But I wanted to read you something. So this came from the Discord channel. This is what people are really dealing with. Forget losing 1.1 units like we did last night. Comes from Jam Bam 311. Not sure if 311 is the band or not, but I'm a big 311 guy myself. So spent time in Omaha, you know, five years in Omaha. So if you're cranking Omaha style anytime, you're a friend of mine, but he wrote, I have twins in the NICU that were born 12 weeks early. I have a toddler whose B day is 311. Maybe that's why it's 311. Three under two, LOL, best bad beat ever. Missed the podcast today. Hadn't watched a game, but was trying to place some late night bets on East Coast for a distraction. LOL. I appreciate all you do, Matt. Good luck, fellas. His two children, Carter and Kendall, are in the NICU. There's pressure, and then there's that. You know? There's betting, there's losing, and then there's that. When you have two kids, twins, that are born 12 weeks premature. One of my friends that I, still to this day, I'm still friends with, when he was in Alabama, and him and his daughter, him and his son, uh, him and his wife had their their daughter his daughter was born so premature that they could put his wedding ring around her waist and she lived and she's in college at arizona state right now modern medicine is incredible but if we're ever wondering about whining you know talking about our beds or talking about what we're doing just know there's people out there that are looking for a distraction and that got me completely over any type of like upset, anger, whatever I had for the, for whatever I lost last night. I was like, who the cares? <laughs> like, so I appreciate him sharing that with us on the discord channel. Again, it's bettingpros.com slash chat. If you want to get into the discord channel, but that's real life stuff, man. That's, that's what really matters. Your family, I mean, children in the, in the NICU, in the hospital, you know, forget anything else. I mean, I talked about it on my other show, but like, Stacy Wakefield passed away yesterday. The wife of Tim Wakefield, who passed away five months earlier. They were both simultaneously fighting cancer. And within six months, their two children lost both their parents. Like, you want to talk about <laughs> things happening in the world and like, you know, losing a bet because Butler didn't show up? It's a game. It's a bet, Okay. There'll be plenty of other ones. We're all lucky to have the opportunity to bet more. Be thankful for that opportunity. Be thankful for your health that we're going to have this opportunity. So on to today. Here's what we're going to do. Now, at the top, the Dallas Stars, second period, 
has hit over 18 consecutive times, over one and a half goals. At DraftKings, you can bet this at minus 166. I'm so cold, and I want you guys to keep on winning that bet. I'm going to bet, not officially though, I'm just telling you I'm going to bet it. My, my anti-Midas touch on this. I'm going to take the under one and a half goals between Dallas and Winnipeg at plus 130. You guys should bet the over. Why? Four and one, the Jets, over the last five games on the road to the over in the second period. Dallas is 18 and 0. 18 and 0. Okay? It's expensive. It's minus 166. But I'm telling you right now, I'll bet the under to let you guys bet the over. And so I'm dead ice cold. So I'm going to go ahead and take the L on that. And you guys can go ahead and cash because I'm not going to come on here and tell you guys to officially take the under at plus 130. And I'm sure as hell not going to tell you to recommend. I'm not going to recommend a minus 166 bet given where I am right now, cold. I'm not going to risk 1.6 units on anything at the moment. You guys were laughing like, Matt, what are you betting live? What am I betting live? I'm not betting anything live right now. I mean, literally, like, normally I've got, like, a bunch of things in play, and I'll bet, like, my official plays, and then I got a bunch of other stuff. Heck no. I'm not crazy enough to bet right now. I can't pick anything right right now. So I just got, you know, to me, it's just, you know, I'll make probably five bets tomorrow. Max. That's it. Three of them will be official. But that second period over will not. Let's go to hockey, though. The Boston Bruins are taking on the, Van, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. So the Bruins are all of a sudden... No longer the Bruins. Like, they're a dead-over team all of a sudden. On this road trip, 6-5 win over Edmonton, 3-2 loss to Calgary, 3-2 loss to Vancouver, 4-3 loss to Seattle. The last three games all tied. If you want to bet, up, and this is a pretty decent play, it's just I can't see it because they went back home, so I don't think that's going to happen. But you could bet the draw. That means at the end of regulation, they're tied. It's plus 320 to bet that. Last three games for the Bruins have gone to overtime. They're changing venues, so that's why I'm kind of like, I don't know. They're going back home. These are road games. But, I mean, really, last four games, sorry. No, last five games have gone to overtime for the Bruins. That's crazy. Last five games have all been to... How how far back does that go? Is it six? Let me make sure. Let me look at this. Uh, it is six. It's six straight games. Six straight games for the Bruins have wound up going to a draw. So, I mean, it's a good bet. Plus 320. Not bad. The Kings, 5-4 overtime loss. Dallas, 4-3 overtime win. Shootout win. Edmonton, 6-5 overtime win. Calgary, 3-2 loss in OT. Vancouver, 3-2 loss in overtime. Seattle, 4-3 loss in a shootout. So, I mean, they're getting points, they're going to overtime, they're getting points and shootouts and whatnot, but, you know, they aren't getting the extra point, but they're getting a point. But they've gotten, wow, that's crazy, six straight games. So plus 320, if you want this game to go to overtime, 3-3, three, three, potential, here. I'm just going to bet the over in this game. Over 5.5 is minus 118. I'm going to jump in here with the Bruins and the Golden Knights to the over. Why? Mostly because of Vegas. Bruins have turned into an over team, but Vegas has really turned into an over team. I mean, they're not playing any defense. So on the road against the Sharks, it was a 4-0 win, but they scored four goals, which is pretty impressive. 5-3 loss to the Predators, 7-3 loss to the Maple Leafs, 4-3 loss to the Senators, and a 6-2 win over the Maple Leafs. I mean, four straight games flying over 5.5. I know the Bruins... You look at them and you're like, oh, it's Boston. They're going to play, you know, they're going to get the goaltending and, you know, they're going to play close to the vest and it's going to be like a 3-2 final, which is very possible, okay? And given the way I am, you may want to bet, you know, mine, under five and a half and have it be a 3-2 final. But I think there's a real good shot at a 4-2 final here. I think the Bruins will score on the Golden Knights. And I think that's probably, I think that's why this game's going to go over. I do lean Boston to win the game because I think they need it. But they're minus 155 on the money line. I'm not really comfortable recommending that or betting it myself. So I think the over, less juice, more likely here. And then maybe Vegas explodes and Boston gives up a ton of goals, which has happened you know, very recently here for the Bruins defensively. They've not been playing typical Boston Bruins games. So 
you know, it's it's just, you know, oh, sorry, that was the Bruins schedule I gave, I gave to you. Sorry, that, that was, no, 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 that was right. That was, that was Vegas, that was right. So you, you have, you know, a Vegas Golden Knights team now that is going to have to take a look at themselves and go, okay, so last four games have all gone over. Bruins have had three of the last five go over. It doesn't really matter who's in who's in net to me for all all the, you know, Thompson or Hill, Swayman or Olmark. It doesn't really matter. The first matchup was back on the 11th of January. It was a two one win for the Golden Knights. So I think that's why we have a five and a half. But given the way the Bruins are playing right now defensively, and given just what we've seen, I, I don't like either one of these teams. I think Boston comes back and gets a big win. I can see Boston putting a hurting on Vegas. Like I can see Boston score like seven goals tonight. Seriously, just completely kill the Golden Knights just because of the way that they're riding. You know, the Bruins are scuffling. They've lost three games in a row, but three out of four here for the Golden Knights. And they were, I mean, they banked Toronto after Toronto killed them 7-3 in Vegas. They went to Toronto in their last game and won 6-2 to two, two days ago. I mean, that's six goals against Toronto. That could be a very similar final score here tonight with the Bruins. So I think we're going to see offense. But again, I don't, you want to fade every one of these bets. I'm not going to be angry at all with you on that. Official play, Vegas over five and a half at the Boston Bruins for 1.18 units. Second bet. So I'm looking for signs. I'm looking to change things up everywhere. There's a kid in the Discord channel. This was amazing. Shane O. He is a Creighton graduate with a UMass Lowell logo. Now that's the universe to me. When I see that, I go, huh. So when I stopped covering the Creighton University Blue Jays, I started covering the UMass Lowell Riverhawks. So I, my station in New Hampshire was the flagship station for the UMass Lowell men's basketball team when they went D1. Now, it was a while ago, but when they first started their D1 program, they went from D2 basketball to D1, I was there. Pat Duquette was the head coach then. He's the head coach now. I know Pat Duquette really well. They're in the America East Conference, and they're 19-7. and seven. They're 10-3 and three in the America East Conference. UMass Lowell has got a shot to win the conference and the automatic bid, although Vermont really is the team to beat in the conference. They always have been, so probably pretty difficult. When they played Vermont, they went to overtime at home, 72-65, lost the game by seven. That was their first loss in conference. Those teams may very well play again. The problem is Vermont's going to be the one seed, and you're going to have to go up to Burlington to play Vermont in that gym, and it is nearly impossible to beat them. But this game is not being played in Vermont, and this game is against Bryant. This game is not against Vermont. So the line is five and a half. Opened up at three and a half, steamed straight to five and a half, okay? Five-point win according to Kempom, 79 to 74. If you remember... You know, we went back and we looked at different teams as to like Merrimack was a team we bet on a lot, right? I don't mind Merrimack tonight. They're at home either. You can jump, you can jump on Merrimack if you want as well. They're laying five at home. You want to go complete, you know, <laughs> Matt Peralt. This is your basketball life. <laughs> bet UMass Lowell and bet Merrimack, okay? So you can bet those two teams if you want. I'm going to go official though with UMass Lowell. And here's the problem. The numbers are kind of crazy. UMass Lowell has won three straight games, but they're one in eight ATS at home, which it makes perfect sense why I would bet on them, right? <laughs> they're way better on the road. They're 10 and four ATS on the road, but they just played Brian on the road and they beat them by nine. They were two point dogs and they beat them at their place. Back to back losses for Brian. They played UMass Lowell, Vermont, and now UMass Lowell again. That's really a difficult three game stretch arguably the two best teams in the America East Conference, and you got to play three of them, you know, three games against them back-to-back. -back. Vermont is 23-6. and six. UMass Lowell is 19-7 and seven. overall, 13-1 and one in conference, 10-3 and three UMass Lowell. Here comes Bryant at 9-4. and four. Big game for UMass Lowell. They got to get a W. They've won three games in a row. I'm going to lay the five and a half here. It's a little higher, but I'm going to take them, given the steam that we've seen here. Some books are already going, have gone to six, so we're seeing even more. There could be somebody out for Bryant. That it's why the steam is really coming in heavy here on UMass Lowell. But take the dog if you want. Fade it if you want. I'm taking UMass Lowell. 
I'm going to lay the five and a half points for 1.1 units. UMass Lowell at home tonight against Bryant. Let's see how that game's going to play out. I'm really curious to see how UMass Lowell plays tonight because I do think this is a game that they should wind up winning. But ESPN Plus most likely has this game if you want to watch it. But UMass Lowell at home this year, not been great ATS, but they have been decent just straight up at home. They play pretty fa- pretty fast. Pat Duquette's team, they do go up tempo, do look to run here. They've scored 104 points in their last game up against Albany at home. They scored 87 against Binghamton, scored 86 against Bryant in their game that they played three games ago. They lost on the road. Their last home loss came to games against UNH where they lost 89-73 back on the 3rd of February, and they lost to Vermont at home. But those are the only two losses they've had in conference so far this year, 10 and three overall in conference. I think they go to 11 and three with a win over Bryant here. We'll take UMass Lowell home tonight. Pat Duquette getting a W minus five and a half for us in that one. And then finally, back to the NBA. Under hit for us last night. We're looking for games to go under. Atlanta is at Brooklyn. The total is 225. So the Brooklyn Nets are 15 and 15. At home this year, but they are one in nine to the under, or nine in one to the under over their last ten games, five and zero oh to the under over their last five against the Eastern Conference. They're eighteen and fifteen to the under. Atlanta nineteen nineteen and one against the East. They are one three and one over their last five. Are three one and one to the under over their last five. Five four and one to the under over the last ten, and they're thirteen and fourteen to the under so far here on the road. Last four games, three zero oh, and one to the under for the Atlanta Hawks. If you go back to the tenth of uh, of February, they are actually four one and one to the under. Gets even better when you chime in here with the Brooklyn Nets. Last four games, sorry, five games, every game on their road trip went under. Boston, Memphis, Minnesota, Toronto, and Boston all went under by five and a half, 17, 34, 17 and a half, and 21. The Boston game before the road trip started went over by one point. It was a line of 227. It was 118, 110. Just went over. The four games before the road trip, all at home, all went under. San Antonio, Cleveland, Dallas, Golden State went under by 6, 11, 10, and 31 points. Under, 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 under. Under 225, Brooklyn and Atlanta for 1.1 units. All right. Three bets officially. UMass Lowell minus 5.5, over 5.5 Bruins and the Golden Knights, under 225, Atlanta and Brooklyn. You want some extras? You can take the minus 166 second period over for the Dallas Stars and the Winnipeg Jets. You want to jump in that 18 consecutive times that that has hit. I'm going to take plus 130 to hopefully let you guys cash on that if you want something extra here today. Again, we have been leaking in a big way here. This is very reminiscent of December and why. But January, we came roaring back. So maybe we get ourselves here and we you know have a decent ending to the month of uh to the month of February to today. Happy Leap Day, by the way. But so far this week, we are down uh, two, 3.3 units so far in the week. So we're not like, it's not impossible for us to have a winning week, okay? We're, we're not so far buried. Just got to avoid the 0 and 3, okay? Just got to avoid that. 1 and 2, 1 and 2, 1 and 2. Okay, that's where we've been going over the last three days. Same record. If you're fading me, you've won every day. Okay, you're not winning big, but one and two, one and two, one and two. So three and six is not good, but I definitely had worse worse stretches than three and six. So even though it feels really bad and it's four straight losing days, which is not fun. And four in, uh, let's see, eight of the last 12 have been losing days. Not great at all. But we're not in so big of a hole that we can't pull ourselves out of it. That's the one benefit here that we can potentially do that. But we got to get going because we don't want to wind up. We're only up four units. We're not actually less. We're up, what, three units for the year now. So giving a lot of it back. Up 10, down 7. Up 10 in January, down 7 in February. You know, got to get going here in March. Hopefully we'll have a solid March. Okay? Cross our fingers. 
Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the DMs. Thank you for the messages. Everything from life from yesterday. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. My name is Matt Peralta. Follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt. Every morning, Daily Juice Podcast. Always being brought to you by OmahaSteaks.com.